uh, Martin is dancing already. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's good that you're bringing good vibes into our talk. So welcome everyone. I'm very excited uh, to be the host of this wonderful talk uh, with three gentlemen. Two of them I haven't met before. One <laughs> I had the honor interviewing last year at oh so yeah it was last year i'm a little mixed up with those years because we decided not to mention 2020 so because of certain events but yeah so um i would love to welcome all the audience members no we don't say that so anyone in the audience just uh, to show us that you are here please just write in the chat where you're located on which planet or which country. And um, we're very curious to know. And what we're gonna do, and one more thing which is important, please address your uh, message to all audience members and panelists probably it's called, just to make sure we, we see everything and the audience sees everything. And yeah, basically we can start. I will just say, a few very quick words about who I am and uh, what I do, and then I will pass pass the floor. No, my, sorry, my English it, it doesn't work today. So um, I will give the floor to these wonderful gentlemen you see uh, next to me, probably. So my name is Maria Dobrovolska. You don't have to 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 remember my last name because my YouTube channel is called Deutsch mit Maria, which basically means Deutsch German with Maria. And um, I ha also have an online school where we also deal with German language. It's all pretty boring, just one language. So yes, and I have been around for a while. And today I'm really happy to talk to other influencers. I hate the word, honestly. I get asked if it's something connected to influenza, which nowadays is the wrong question. So yes, I'm very happy to present. Uh, I'm thinking about the Sequence, Martin, you were dancing already, so why don't you start and say a few words about yourself? All right, well, thank you, Maria. Uh, I, will I will take the floor. Uh, my name is Martin, I'm from Sweden. I'm known as, or referred to as, the Swedish lad. Uh, and I've been doing YouTube for about 13, 14 years, and video online since 99. Uh, and I, I teach, I, I teach, I, I'm, I'm sort of like a gateway drug into Swedish. Uh, I'm not a language teacher, but I love teaching people Swedish and also showing some uh, cultural and fun stuff. But uh, yeah, I will now be the gateway uh, drug guy. Passing it on, hello. Thank you, Martin. Uh, Davide, would you like to um, go on? Yes, um, my name is Davide, I'm from Italy and I have a channel and podcast. Actually, it started as a podcast. That's why it's called the Podcast Italiano for people learning Italian. And then I opened a YouTube channel in, so the, the podcast, I opened it in 2016 and the YouTube channel in 2017. And, and now this is my full-time job. So I'm teaching Italian and, and, and that's what I do. Perfect, thank you. Davide, have you been teaching offline as well or did you just start online? I started online actually, yeah. So oh, okay. I, I also do private lessons. Uh, I'm doing less of those now. May, I'm focusing mainly on my project now. Okay, perfect. Thank you and welcome. All right, Joel, you are last but not least. Yeah, hey everybody. So my name is Joel Ackerman. Sounds German, but I'm 100% French. Uh, so I do teach French on Instagram. I started a channel for French beginners a couple of years ago. And it started to grow quite fast. I uh, have an amazing community that's following me every single day. And um, yeah, and together we're kind of build French courses for beginners, which I provide on the site. And it's been quite a nice adventure so far. Thank you so much, Joy. So when I decide to revive my French, finally, I will definitely come back to you. Absolutely. So gentlemen, uh, I'm thinking, uh, why don't we tell our audience what is so great about working the way we work? I mean, we definitely have maybe some offline teachers uh, among uh, the audience who had to suffer, you know, moving online 
um, because of you know what, and they didn't really like it. So all four of us decided to do it, hopefully voluntarily, so nobody forced us to. How was it? Why, why did you decide to go online and what is good or bad about it for you? Let's start with the good things. And I learned at university, you should never ask your students too many questions at once. So let's start with why, why did you decide to go online? What was this, you know, okay, I shall do it. Shall, I, shall I name someone? For me, all right. Um, well, I, I've been traveling for the last 10 years around the world. Um, I lived quite everywhere and any, every single country, well, I had to learn the language, right? You need to know basic words in order to understand the culture and to share with local people. And in that way also, everyone keep asking me, hey, can I learn French? Can you teach me French? And at that time, I wanted to start this uh, Instagram adventure because for me, it was a great way to teach French. I never wanted to teach French as a boring, boring way as in course as in at the university but on instagram it's like daily content supposed to be entertaining so for me it was the perfect media to to start that all right thank you joe martin you you kept nodding so you're next obviously yeah i'm a, I'm a nodder that's what i do uh, i mean i've, I've always nodder. been <laughs> i've always been interested in languages and back in 2010, I think it was, I found this article in The Local, uh, which is like uh, local news, but in English uh, that uh, we have in some countries in Europe. And uh, the article was about 10 Swedish words that did, that did not exist in the English language. And I thought, okay, I'm going to step out of my comfort zone and I'm going to make a video that my audience will probably hate just because I want to do it. And then I did it and a boom, and a boom, that's what happened. And, and I came to this you know, I have a master's degree, so I came to this sort of academic conclusion. Okay, these guys like this. I like doing it. What should I do with that information? And basically, that's how my channel became, uh, I guess, language-driven. Uh, you know, do what you love. That's 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 the key to everything. Do what you love. Davida, your hair looks glorious, someone said. I can only agree. I don't uh, know if I agree, but thank you anyway. <laughs> um, so for me... I. I've been interested in languages for many years. I was a language learner be before opening or starting this project. And uh, I wanted to make good content for people who wanted to learn Italian, as simple as that. And, uh, and that's what I've been trying to do. And uh, what I like about working uh, online, I don't know, many things, I guess, having a community, I don't know, a community of people that builds around what you make, your content, um, you know, the, the freedom that, you know, working online gives you and the creativity that you can, you can pursue. Um, yeah, many things. Thank you, Davide. There is a question I get asked a lot. Um, that is, oh, Jesus, but I couldn't do that because I, you need to be an expert in everything. You need to be an expert in editing. You, you need to know a lot of technical stuff. You need to know uh, all about, uh, I don't know, analytics on YouTube. What is your experience about that? So I, I would be interested to hear too, because my opinion is definitely you do not have to be an expert in everything. I believe in delegating a lot, but I believe in this core thing you need to bring into your whatever you do. You have to be an expert um, in, you know, believing what you're telling your audience. So it's not about reading scripts, it's about telling them something that you actually believe and that is your experience and then that um, actually makes you an expert. So what about this expertness? What do you think? Well, I mean, if, if only the absolute expert got to have a say, then we would be quite a few, quite a few people doing this. Uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm a big believer in content is king. If if I'm driven, if you can see in my eyes that I really enjoyed this, then uh, I can make anyone excited about what I'm talking about, even if that's not maybe their preference uh, to start with. So content is always king. And then it's always good to you know, kind of enhance what you do. You have a ring light there, a ring light there. You have a microphone uh, like Joel has, and you start 
you know, improving your content afterwards, but it all starts with, you know, me being passionate about something. And sometimes I will say something or make something that might not be true, but then, you know, I also learn and a lot of people comment and that's how I get a lot of uh, people watching. Yeah, for me, I think what is what matters is to be yourself. Uh, don't copy too much what is online. Uh, do your own style, be yourself. Uh, to, tell about what you think, what is true, what you believe in, and then your audience will make the rest. I mean, the audience will help to build your style along with you. You will do something, be yourself, and then they will tell you what they like more or less, and it will grow and adapt little by little. Do you don't need all technical stuff? Just start and then the rest will follow. Yeah, and also to get good at anything, you have to do it a lot. And uh, like you can't be, you can't make good videos when you're starting out. Like you, you might, you may think that they're good, but then you're gonna watch them in five years and you're gonna think they were crap, <laughs> uh, objectively speaking. So you just have to to start out and you're gonna get better. And uh, I mean, there are so many things I still don't know anything about and I'm not an expert at like SEO, still very, very bad at that. But, you know, uh, you get better over time, I, I, I guess. <laughs> I guess that's my experience. You definitely do. So every time someone tells me, oh, you know, I'm camera shy, I can't talk to the camera. I say, you know, after 50 videos, it becomes easier and easier. And I never deleted the very first videos on my channel and I have, I don't know, 700, 800, something like that, just to show that I was scared like hell. I was basically frozen. I learned the text by heart and still it, it took me 20 takes to make a video that was more or less decent. And I hope nobody will watch it because I was so embarrassed. So, and now it's like, it's easier to talk to the camera than talking to actual people uh, because I'm used to it so much. So the next question is when you compare your experience or your mindset uh, on the first day of your blogging, vlogging or whatever, and now, what, what is your biggest learning, your biggest insight? Oh, I would say that it's, this is a weird thing because it kind of contradicts what was just said, but I feel like I was a lot more creative in the beginning because I was trying things out. And now I kind of almost feel like I'm sometimes stuck in formats, you know, when you feel like I have to do what I, what I've always done instead of just kind of do something really weird. And I realized that when I do something really weird or something out there, again, people see that I enjoy doing it and they respond to it. So I, uh, I think, you know, keeping that young and crazy, you know, belief system uh, intact and, and, and still experiment and don't get stuck in formats. David is nodding. Yeah. So I had a thought. I don't know about you guys. I've only just met you. So I don't know if you, if you do this as your job or as a, you know, as a, as a hobby or, but one thing I realized I've been doing this as my, full-time job for a year and I've noticed that if at the beginning what what was at the beginning like something very exciting and very cool that you would do with a lot of passion I, I still have a lot of passion but now it's my job and it's it's different in that you know it's it's like all jobs it has frustrations and, and, and it comes with struggles and so I think there's this romanticized idea that if you do a job that you like, and I do like it, uh, it's, every day is going to be awesome and you're going to go, you're going to start working with a smile on your face and you're going to be happy all the time. It's not like that. You know, sometimes you won't be creative. Sometimes you will struggle and you will have a million problems. And so it's just a, like a job. It's a cool job, but it's like a, it's like a job. So that's something I realized uh, recently. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, it's there is like life on Instagram and real life, right? You know what we can see on social media, and for for that job, it's exactly the same. Uh, it's amazing, but it's not as cool as it sounds. We have the up and down as everyone else. Uh, on my side, what I learn is well, especially on Instagram because I'm specialized on Instagram. First, you think too much, you make it too complicated. 
uh, what I learned is make it simple, find your style and yeah, make it as simple as possible because even simple is going to be hard and that's how it's going to work the most. So yeah, focus on that, find one style and stick in it, stick to it and you'll be okay. Perfect words. We should print them on t-shirts, I think. We, we, we should make like Expo Lingua t-shirts with, or, or blankets or something with those wisdoms. So the next thing is, how about struggles? What would you describe as a real struggle or problem or something that, you know, puts some clouds on, on the shiny existence of an influencer? So to start with an example from myself, um, I found myself at some point answering private messages on, I guess, Facebook or Instagram or something in the middle of the night, thinking that, Jesus, this is a person who has an exam the next day. I have to help her. I have to answer right away. And at some point, I noticed that if I'm not, if I won't adjust my boundaries and say, okay, this is my private time, I put away my phone, which is basically my work, and I won't answer to anything. I will just burn out and, and um, you know, I won't be of any use for my audience. So how about you? Well, okay, for me, uh, on my side, that's true at the beginning, you want to please everyone. And that's not possible. You have to understand that. And as, um, as I said, I took it as a job. Uh, but for me, the I mean, the hardest part is the consistency at the beginning when you start it's uh you have a lot of patience that's a, the honeymoon phase everything in you is great but then it's hard you don't gonna have as much followers uh got likes and comment as you want it takes a while to have this snowball effect where it's gonna grow naturally and efficiently so this phase at the beginning is the hardest if you can keep being strong and consistent after that phase everything will be okay and that's the hardest part for me in my part yeah and i think everyone else will try to do the same adventure it will happen as well something i noticed i think you mentioned you know uh being frustrated about growing i think something that's a little bit that's not great about how i you know experience my job as an influencer, I guess that's what I am now, uh, is like getting hung up on numbers. Uh, if you're on a platform like YouTube or Instagram or all platform, I guess, you, you can have very detailed analytics about how your videos or posts are doing. And, and sometimes you can actually fall into the trap of, of looking at numbers all the time. And that's not very healthy, I think. Um, and also, I guess one other thing would probably be if, if you, if you don't have a team and I still don't have a team at the moment, um, it can be, a, it can get a little bit lonely, you know, because you're, you know, alone all the time, you're home, you're working. And so, you know, sometimes it wouldn't be bad to see other people, I guess. Uh, so that's probably the downside of, of this job. Yeah, I mean, for me, uh, <laughs> don't mention the war. Uh, much of what I do involves, you know, traveling and, and or meeting up with people from other countries here in Sweden. Uh, I mean, my my office uh, where I work. Uh, so this is this is not my re my real job. Uh, I always say that the YouTube stuff uh, has always been my hobby, but every single job I've had in the last twelve years has come from that in some uh, way. And outside my window in Old Town Stockholm. Uh, I see all these tourists and, and it's like, oh, if I could only <laughs> film with that person, that person. But for, for me, you know, the best part uh, is really from when I hit export until it's 100% uploaded. That's the best part. And then afterwards, it's, you know, you, you have all these expectations of this is going to be amazing. And then you're like, okay, maybe next time. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, managing expectations, but also finding ways, like you were saying, Joel, about consistency and, and you know, sometimes you will do these, these, these big videos, the ones we really put a lot of effort into, and then you have the ones that are more filling the gaps, if we're to be honest, or maybe it's just me. 
but yeah but you can you can never expect on youtube i don't know about instagram because i'm not an expert but you can never expect how big a video is going to to be and so sometimes you, you put so much expectation into a video and then it flops and then like a random video a random blog for me maybe gets a lot more views and and you know you always have this uncertainty and about how the algo algorithm is going to treat your videos That's yeah i mean th yeah definitely i mean um the, the the hard truth for me is that my most video every single month is still an eight-year-old video <laughs> which is like both cool and also like slightly depressing <laughs> That is fascinating. We have some some members uh, from the audience uh, complaining slightly that we don't talk about our language learning. So my point is that a good teacher is always a good learner because if you stop learning yourself, um, you can't really relate how your students feel because some people imagine that being a teacher means that you learn something up to a certain level and then you go ahead and, and teach it and you don't learn anything else. So how about you? What, what do you learn? How do you learn? And how important is that to you? Uh, well, for, for me, uh, I think it's all about enjoying it. I can't learn a language if I don't like it, if I don't enjoy it. So I always find a way to make it entertaining. And as long as I like it, it can be with TV shows, it can be with going to coffees, uh, language exchange, um, friends, anything. I think anyone should just find what he likes and stick with it. There is not the best formula. Uh, yeah, For me, that's what happens. I keep traveling and I keep learning new languages. And as long as I find ways to enjoy it, uh, it works. Perfect. So how many languages do you speak, Joel? Oh, well, uh, <laughs> just you <laughs> currently living in, uh, in Colombia. So, well, I have like, well, English, French, and Spanish. Uh, I learned quite for many years uh, Vietnamese. I lived there for a couple of years. It was a great big adventure and few little things here and there, but not mench mentioning, mentioning it. Yeah. What is the next planned language? Um, <laughs> hard to say. It depends always of where where I'm going next. Uh, Russian will be will be great or uh, Arabic uh, for me. Mm -hmm. So you have quite big plans for for your next journeys as soon as they're going to be possible <laughs> again. Okay, how about the others? Well, I mean, I would say that. I mean, for me. Uh, like Joel was saying, keep it fun. And uh, part of one of the, the formats I have are language challenges where you combine, you know, English as the sort of the language we use to navigate through the video, but then we have Swedish or and Polish or Swedish and Russian. And so, something happens there uh, because you, you suddenly reach a bigger audience because, I mean, everybody enjoys uh, foreigners trying to speak your language. It's, it's just naturally funny um, and everybody enjoys me trying to survive Polish which is th the most difficult language in the world <laughs> according to me <laughs> what do you say that yeah um, I was a learner before I opened a YouTube channel so I've learned English Spanish French Russian those are the languages I I was successful at learning. Then I tried to learn other languages like German, but I failed for some reasons. I, I think the main reason is like, if you're motivated, you're going to succeed. If you don't have that motivation, like for me with German, it's going to be harder. Um, I wanted to say one thing about, I think you mentioned that Maria, that being a, a learner is helpful for teachers. And I agree with that wholeheartedly because I think being a language learner makes me a much better teacher and content creator. Um, I know what I like in language learning. I, I know what can help students. Um, and I make, I base my content off of my experience as a learner. So um, I think if you're a teacher or if you, if you create content and, but you don't learn languages, the type of content you're going to make is going to suffer a little bit. 
Sure. Thank you. So the next question is probably a little unexpected. Imagine there is a parallel world where you could have a completely different uh, profession or completely different job. You would not be a language influence, influencer. You would be someone, someone else. Who would you be? Or what would you do? Oh, wow. Um, my first response, I, I really liked turtles as a kid. I read everything about turtles. And then I also like st statistics, which is, I don't know why, you know, I mean, we have uh, the, the now late Hans Gosling, which I guess everyone hopefully has seen. He's the guy who presents things with apples and stuff. So some kind of visual storyteller, and it doesn't have to be languages, but a visual storyteller using apples about turtles. There you go. Very concrete. What? I like it. <laughs> I will pass it on to the parallel universe so they will contact you, Martin. <laughs> How can we answer after David? I'm after Martin. Uh, I mean, <laughs> uh, on my side, I'm uh, a part of being a French teacher. I'm also a UX UI designer, so what we call a web designer, also an entrepreneur. Um, so I already have different uh, sides, um, jobs, and projects. Um, otherwise, well, a part of turtles, hmm, hard to say. I think I love to be maybe in the real estate market um, in order to travel around the world, um, help people to, I like design, I like architecture, I like to meet people. Um, that's something I could combine everything. Who knows? Very interested. interesting. What about you, David? Unexpected. So do yeah. you surprise us? Well, in the past, I wanted to be a musician. I mean, I am a musician, but I wanted to be a professional musician. Uh, then I changed my mind and I went into language learning and started studying languages at university. So maybe that would be cool. Or I don't know, maybe something in acting. That's something that, you know, I've wanted to do for a long time and of course can do now. So that's something I'm going to do before. Well, you know. <laughs> we didn't want to mention the pandemic, so I'm sorry I broke the rule. <laughs> okay, sorry, Davido, we have to shoot you now. Yeah. I, I warned you before. I'm ready. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's, it's interesting. Well, actually, I, I'm not sure what I would be doing. I would be probably writing books for children, but this is not entirely fair because I'm planning to do that more. Uh, in the near future. I have actually my first book coming out this year, which is not for children, but it's more about exams. So I'm kind of working towards this dream because I'm not sure if I'm planning to be a YouTuber for the rest of my life. So I have been for the past five years, which is a lot of time in the online world. Okay, Martin, you, you, you're like a grandfather <laughs> among <Thank you>. us, <laughs> which <laughs> probably it, it means more experience and, uh, you know, with all the respect. So, yes, um, I would suggest we, we have to round up uh, slowly. So how about one last piece of advice to our wonderful audience? We have... 95 people online now and I guess a lot of them will a lot of other people will watch us in replay so one last thing you would love to to give the audience we have like one minute Joel go first come on Joel you can do it <laughs> but there is a rule no COVID talk uh, unfortunately I have to break it I'll sell um, in my side a lot of students there's just some stop being motivated because they wanted to learn languages to travel, but well, COVID happens. I will say, don't lose the motivation. It will be over soon and keep learning because soon you're gonna be able to travel again and practice your language in Paris. I guess we, we have just to sign uh, Joel's words, all of us, because our time is, is almost up. So on this point, I would like to thank you all for the interesting questions in the chat. And thank you, dear gentlemen, for talking to me and answering my tricky questions. And I hope we meet again online or offline very soon. Thank you so thank much you. and have fun at the rest of ExpoLingua and yeah, see you again. Salut. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Ciao, ciao.